Hello, hello, and welcome. Week 9, problem 1. A long fine wire is wound into a coil with an inductance of 5 millihenries. The coil is connected across the terminals of the battery and the current is measured a few seconds okay, a few seconds after the connection is made. The wire is unwound and wound again into a different coil, but this time inducted is 10 millihenries. The second coil is connected across the battery in the same manner and the current is measured in the same way. Compared with the current in the first coil, the second the current in the second coil. Compared with the current in the first coil is the current in the second coil. Okay. Hmm. Alright. So I think I'm gonna call shenanigans on this question. So you have let's say call this guy current, call this guy time. You're gonna have a maximum current and your current is going to kind of look like this. Hop. And then this. No, that's wrong. Like that. Where it gets just as high. Now this, I'm used to be measured in milliseconds. So the idea here is you um, connect a solenoid up to a current, uh, up to a voltage, current's produced, and using the hydraulic analogy, which is what I use for pretty much everything in life, you imagine that the um, solenoid is a water wheel. Oh, that was a terrible paddle. So you have current coming up this way. Initially there's some resistance, but eventually the water wheel starts spinning and you get zero resistance to flow. So initially large resistance to flow, then eventually, and then finally no resistance to flow. Um, the definition of inductance is this, where when you solve this guy for whatever your equation is, you have voltage from your battery, you have di dt, and that's you have inductance. Um, for capacitance, I think it's just the opposite, so it's i of t equals c dv dt. So, in, so one way to think of this is an inductor opposes a change in current, a capacitor opposes a change in bolted. And that's where this capacitance and that inductance comes in. Um, and then one thing you guys know, so you have I, which is really just current divided by time. So when you have current, which is dQ dt, and you integrate both sides with respect to time, you get current. And that's where you get Q equals CV. Then naturally you think to do the same thing over here. It's like, oh, hey, voltage, we'll just integrate that with respect to time. Well, that really doesn't I think there's a value actually for voltage integrated with respect to time, but no one uses it, and it's dumb and stupid, and no one uses it. Yeah, so you can't do it like the easy, all the cool things you do with capacitors, and like you know, figuring out Q equals CV, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That really does not work the same well, same way, uh, with inductors. So, don't don't try and create the analogy from capacitors to inductors that way. Just just let it go, let it go. So for this guy, so this is basically measured in milliseconds, so they're still going to go up to the same maximum I. So what I'm going to say here then is inductance doesn't really have anything to do with current. Inductance has to do with the time it takes to get to its maximum current, or you could think of it as the size of this water wheel. But when you're talking about seconds later, which you know is a big deal when you're talking about inductors, um, then it's basically going to be reached at maximum current. And the maximum current is basically just going to be, you know, how much current you have coming in here, how much current you have going out there. The inductor itself, the paddle wheel, is not going to be creating any sort of um, resistance to that induct that uh, current flowing through. So I'm going to say unchanged with this one. So I'm like, this is a stupid question, and I don't understand why it's being asked. So I'm going to say unchanged, um, and that's why. When we have an uh, inductor, long time after the inductor has been connected, i.e. seconds, which is, you know, unless you're talking about mill or microseconds, then you're pretty much going to be at this maximum current. And especially because you're talking about millihenries, which are it's a normal sized uh, inductor, it's just going to be unchanged. So that's what I'm saying for problem one. As always, I'm not perfect. If you answered it, it turns out to be a different answer. Help out your fellow man. Put the answer down in the comments.
Sounds good. See you problem two.